Guys, welcome to a brand new edition of Full Time Reds. I'm really excited about this week's episode because I've got a guest with me that if you've not seen him on TikTok, I don't know where you've been. Um, I'm very I'm very excited to welcome Coach Rafaz with me on the show today. Coach, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, Bilal, for having me. I really appreciate you know it. What? Thank you. I'm really excited about this episode because I've done a lot of episodes where I usually you get an opinion on or, or, or a general opinion on the takeover or um, just chatting with somebody on a similar level to me. But today, I've got somebody of your caliber who understands it from a tactical point of view. And I wanted to do a show where we covered the tactics and, and, and more about the style of play rather than going over general points. So, so I'm really excited. Thank you for taking time out. And guys, if you've not seen this guy, he's all over TikTok. His breakdowns on the videos are fab. You know what? Um, I'll leave the details in the description but you need to check this out it improved my fiver side game massively so you need to check him out definitely but look i'll start off with um to get into it um i want to go over yesterday's game just a quick briefly over because so many people have covered it but what were your thoughts about yesterday's game generally i just think um like we, we were always saying before wait for the injuries to finish and wait for the full score to be back and barring Lissandro Martinez, that was the proper squad. And yet, I'm just still feeling there's a lack of control over the game. Like, full respect to Luton, but when we're Manchester United playing against Luton, that game should easily be under control, very relaxed, you know, just another day in the office. Good to go 2-0 no up, first 10 minutes. But then after that, yes, we could have scored second half towards the end, but... We saw how many chances Luton had non-stop possession of the ball. They actually controlled most of the game with Ross Barkley, you know, Lukonga as well. So, um, yeah, th th that's my take. I think it, we need to see much more from that squad at the moment. You know, so, so, as from a coaching point of view, um, you could probably analyse this a lot better than I could. Why is it that... It, it, that they they seem to have such ill discipline and switch off in games after like 10 15 minutes why why is that happening yeah very good question and something that i've thought about for a long time so ten hogs mindset and ideas that they're not going to they don't suit this team for example when um i don't know if you've noticed sometimes when Varane plays the ball there to let's say dallo he just yeah. goes there he he goes forward leaving a space and the reason he does that is to drag the opposition. So, like, if this is the opposition striker and Varane plays the ball there and he continues his run, obviously he follows him. If he doesn't, well, Varane just gets the ball back, right? So he's using his centre-backs to rotate and move to different places. And for me, the centre-backs that Man United have, whether that's Lissandro, Varane, Maguire, Lindelof, they're not able to suit that style of play. And when they are not able to suit that style of play and Varane ends up here and then Dallo loses the ball, of course the striker's going to go and score. <laughs> you know, the, the, there's a lack of, it, there's a lack of um, strict discipline. And some coaches like that freedom to give their players the freedom to move wherever they want. But with Man United and where they are at the moment, it needs to be the two centre-backs always behind the ball at all times. One full-back go higher, one full-back stay. You know, just the basics, Alex Ferguson, one midfielder, join the attack, one stay. Very simple. F fill up the gaps where if we do lose the ball, at least we're there to gain the ball back. And for me, those simple principles, Ten Hag hasn't focused on, which is why there's a switch, lack of um, focus. If you noticed against Nottingham Forest, when they when the, the cutback and then they just scored. Yeah, yeah, the cutback, the famous ha cutback. The fa thank you. The famous cut. How often has that happened, you know, Loads this season? Yeah, so it's like... To what extent can we say, okay, it's Ten Hag, it's the players. I would say it's more Ten Hag than the players to an extent. Um, it's just Ten Hag's implementing strategies and ideas that doesn't suit the players he has at the moment. It doesn't. You know, so I'm going to come to Ten Hag further on in this. Just from, I want to stick to the current style of play. Why do you think, is it... So my question is, and I'll, and I'll add to this question, my question was going to be around why do United not have a style of play? Now, because you've kind of slightly answered that, is it because of the wrong profile of player or is it because the manager just is out of his depth? Yeah, so 
if we've noticed that, that they do go long from goal kicks, which is which is quite interesting or strange to see from a top six or a top eight team. You know, Brighton play out from the back, even Luton play out from the back. A lot of teams actually pass the ball to a centre back, but United, they. They they started off with Onana playing out from the back and then they just said, OK, no, it's not going to work. And then from goal kicks, when they all just shuffle up, let's say, like it's almost like schoolboy style of football where they'll just kick it long and see what happens. But the more you do that, the more transitional you become, which means when, the, when you just launch the ball, where's the guarantee that you're going to immediately win the ball back like from the air? You know, you know one thing I've noticed? And I... And, and I, and I, I, I I must be the only person that goes on about this, but United don't seem to go for 50-50s as well. I saw Rashford yesterday. He constantly pulls out of 50-50s. Yeah. Fernandez seems to lean to the side, hoping that the other guy just falls over him. So if we're going long and we don't go for the second ball or the 50, it's, it's a pointless exercise. Am I right? Or No, no, absolutely. And that's why like we reference to schoolboy errors or schoolboy school decision-making. So let's say they all shuffle over to this side. They go long. Where's the aerial battles apart from McTominay, who's on the bench? Casemiro, Maynou, and Bruno in the middle. You know, and uh, sorry, Garnacho, Rashford, Hoyland. There's no real presence to win the ball in the air. And even if you do win the ball in the air, or even if you do get the second ball, it's too chaotic. So of course you cannot have a play style if you're just punting it long. And for me, that lack of play style has led to them getting the ball and quickly trying to score. Every time they get the ball, they want to score, you know. Too, too many times they play a misplaced pass. Casemiro with a lack of patience as well. And yeah. What I also notice is um, when we take a goal kick, we'll have maybe two players next to the keeper. The keeper passes it to the defender. He passes it back and we just hoof it one. So I'm thinking just hoof it one in the first place then. What was the point of that? Yeah, so um, I mean, with that, they vary up. So like I saw yesterday in the second half, they were all up and then, Onana just kicked it. Sometimes they'll do, yeah. So sometimes they'll go, they'll do a one-two, and then they'll push up quickly and do it. There's not a big difference between what they do. It's just even with this one, if your centre backs are here and you kick it long, if something happens, look at all this space. Until they get there, something could have happened, especially in the Premier League in that pro fast-paced environment. So I, I think Ten Hag just, for some reason, he hasn't found a very simple plan. Like as you said, Man United don't have an identity. Like if you tell me what is their identity, I don't really know. Apart from, <laughs> you know, it, it's hard to say. If anything, counter-attack football might, might suit Man United more, playing on the counter. You know, our you're a United fan, I'm a United fan. Our history, we have had, you know, when people say, what is United? We're counter-attacking was part of our DNA for a very, very long time. Under Ferguson as well, we were renowned for it. I remember going to the Emirates in the Champions League and Ronaldo Rooney, Park Ji Sung ripped yeah. the Arsenal apart just on, yeah. on, purely on the counter-attack. But th as fans, I think we've, there's been a, we've, we've gone to like, we want to be a possession-based team and we want to be, you know, like dominating the ball and we want to be rock and roll like Liverpool back and forth. But, for some reason, every manager that's come in, they've got lost in what United should be. Yeah. Do you do you think that is more just the sheer size of the job and just the the overwhelmness of everything that comes with it, or do you think it's just purely lack of planning? I would say it's more the planning than the size of the club. So I would say if a manager came in, like, like if you look at Arteta and Arsenal, how 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 patient were Arsenal with Arteta, right? In the first few seasons, so many people are saying, oh, Arteta out. But if you, he had a plan, he had a long-term vision, and now we can see the fruit of it. With Man United, it's like one manager comes in, he implements his play style too early and the players aren't able to adapt. Or he doesn't have a play style, he lets the players do what they want. And there needs to be a manager with enough, like, that, that like, I can imagine if De Zerbi came to Man United, he would just do what he's been doing at Brighton. Like, he will not change. Someone like uh, Pep Guardiola, for example. Like, a manager that will come to a team who's known for their identity and just implement it. Whether that takes three, four years, I would say United need to stick to them because they've been chopping and changing too often as well in the recent years, in recent history. So the players can't have any continuity, can't have any consistent style of play because it's always, like, changing. 
and also I feel um, what doesn't help is uh, players with bad attitudes and bad work ethic does doesn't help the cause. You know, players not wanting the ball. And players scared of 50-50s. I was, you know, yesterday yeah. we saw in the 90th minute, Bruno, when he should have kept the ball, started having a, a shot, which nearly led to a goal. It's really bad, ill-discipline. From Just coming back to the tactical aspect then, right? So everyone knows the problems. The midfield is a big hole. We've going on about this since with the Wolves game at the start. Yeah. How... Looking at your board there, how would you tactically improve Man United then? How 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 would you maybe change the shape? How would you make some simple changes in your point of view? So so yeah, <clears throat> I would say once again I would go back to the sim- simplicity of a standard four two three one, nothing too crazy. I'm not going to say Maguire like yesterday. By the way, I saw Maguire play a pass to Shaw, and, and then he, he went through. Yeah. Yeah, I saw he that went, as well. He went there and I was thinking, oh my God. And then Onana was here to collect the ball and then they went long. So I'm thinking, if, if something happens here, Maguire, until he's come back, something would have happened. And then, like, for me, that play style works for certain types of teams and, and that's not Man United in their current moment. So I will just make sure that the two centre-backs always stay behind the ball. Done. Yeah. Two centre-midfielders, Casemiro Menu, stay behind the ball. So we have a square here and then... If the ball is coming to this side, Shaw can overlap and join in Rashford. Dallow doesn't have to end up there. He doesn't. He can also just tuck in and you have like three defensively and two sitting in front. Then you can attack with five, see what happens. If it's not on and it comes back, Dallow can join the wing with Garnacho, And then Shaw just comes back and you just shuffle across again. So you still have your three. You have Casemiro Menu doing this sort of job, going from side to side. And then Bruno... Hoyland and then the front five can just they have the freedom to make things happen and and try things but knowing that okay if we do lose the ball at least we have five to sweep up occasionally Maynou can join in as well so you have Casemiro sitting but I would really say for the moment with where they are you just make sure you have this sort of a shape and this shape is so common in the best teams even um, I watched Sunderland versus Plymouth in the championship in November I went to watch them um, and Sunderland were playing the same formation as Man City. Three, two, five. Five attackers, two sitting in between and three defenders. But when they do this and then he goes there and then the, the, you, you can't play like that at Man United. You know that system you've shown, I'm pretty sure Mourinho used to use that kind of very similar, very tight, you know, five out the back and used to let the front five just kind of do what they do, but he kept it very solid Um Am I right, or have I just overanalyzed uh, Jose Mourinho there? No, no, exactly. And I would say he did that more in Real Madrid with Ozil, yeah. Ronaldo, Di Maria, right. Higuain. Literally, Xabi Alonso, Kadira were just sitting. They never went forward. And then Marcelo might overlap occasionally, but it was literally the front four or Marcelo as well, which makes it a front five, doing what they want. Because for me, if this is not set, if this is not structured, we could be the best team here. But there's no point because constantly <laughs> we, we, we won't have control over a game. But if, if 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 me and you can see that, why are they not seeing yeah. that then? And, and 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 that's the problem where I've always been a supporter of Ten Hag for what he did in his first season. And I've said, okay, benefit of the doubt with the injuries and everything. But I just feel like to what extent can we just say, oh, it's not his fault? Because you're the coach, you should be able to see it. Like for me, I know for a fact and I, people might call me arrogant, but honestly, if Casemiro and Menu just sit and you have, let's say, Varane and Lissandro sitting there and then you have Dallo staying there because the ball is... Sorry, if you have Shaw staying here because Dallo's joined up there and you go like this, I'm pretty sure United will have more control and they'll concede less counter-attacks. I, like, honestly, I, I genuinely think that. <laughs> You know, you know, you're right because I remember you mentioned the Harry Maguire thing. I remember Johnny Evans doing that in the game yesterday. Yeah, he exactly. ended up in the bloody other box, and I was like, "Whoa, this is like." And I, Dallo was nearly scored from an over. Onana played it over, so he must. Ten Hag must be telling him to do that then, because exactly. they're not so, just, really just doing that themselves. They must be being told that you need to join the attack. The fullbacks need to get in uh, right as forward as possible. He must be. Exactly. So that way where the centre-back plays the pass and ends up there like Maguire or Evans, that's not natural for a centre-back. So I know 
that Ten Hag has told them. Because usually a centre-back will play the pass and all they'll do is move there, maybe to get the ball back, or they'll stay where they are. But a centre-back never really goes like that. John Stones does it, but that's because with Pep, he, that's his role. With Man United, anyone can do it. And then no one's on the same page. So for me, yeah, it's clear that he's still sticking to this principle. But I'm looking at Ten Hag and Ajax. He never did this at Ajax. Like they had Matthias De Ligt. De Ligt would just literally stay at the back. So, so I'm not really sure what his intentions are, but it's very obvious that it's not working. Very obvious. <laughs> do, you, do you think... Which brings me nicely onto my next question linked to this then. Do you think that's the reason we're conceding so many goals? Yes. Like almost, I would say 100%. So they've become too transitional, which means if they lose the ball, they've lost the ball for a long period of time. They're not able to be in a position to win it back and restart the counter. They can't sustain pressure and control. So when a, when centre back when a centre-back ends up there, and then Shaw goes long and something happens and then the, the opposition play a quick pass, bang. There's an acres, there's acres of space for the striker to get the ball, running at the goal. Of course, there's going to be less control and of course, we're conceding a lot of goals f for that reason. <laughs> Very obviously put. Centre-back ends up there, this centre-back covers, but then the right-back has ended up there. There's a lot of space there, for example. If they don't have a set structure, they will still stay like this for a long time. <laughs> And, and 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 I know Maguire gets a lot of um, hate online and stuff. But do you think players like Maguire? Well, you might have actually answered this, but just to kind of go over it again. It's the system that's not helping these guys, or do you feel some of them, some of the defenders like Maguire, are out of their depth? Yeah. So, yeah, good question. With Lissandra and Varane. Obviously, on the ball, they're very, very good. And I would still say they shouldn't do that sort of movement, number one, because centre-backs need to stay where they are. Otherwise, you're conceding too many counter-attacks. And this is where Ten Hag needs to adapt to his players. So if you can see Maguire and Evans are not comfortable doing it, like they're not comfortable giving the ball to Shaw, making the run and then getting the ball on the half turn. They're not able to do that. So why are you telling them to do it? Just adapt to the... Like, ad adapt to your players. So, I think more so than the players, it's the manager that thinks his squad is actually better than what it actually is. Like, I, I think he doesn't know his players as well as he should. That's the way I see it. Like, more than we do, <laughs> it looks like. Rafa's, that's that's worrying, you know. That's really worrying because this guy's been here, what, nearly two years. Yeah. Um, and... To me, to me as a fan, um, I feel that we've gone back to, it's as if Oli's last season, we've gone back to that point, you know, and that everything that happened in between just kind of disappeared. So Ralph Ragnick came in, Ten Hag's last season, and we've just gone back to that point of like not having control of games, you know, um, constantly teams know how to play against us. And just, we've spent a lot of money as well. Is that worrying for you as well? Or do you see it similarly? 100%. 100%. Um, what's funny is that this is Ten Hag's second season. If it was his first season, you know, attitudes would be different. But it's his second season and their, and their first season was like what it should be for, the, for Ten Hag's second season. <laughs> last year, last season, I was very happy with, with how everything turned out in, in general. Now they've just gone back down. Is it the players' discipline, their attitude? Are they the players that really care about the club? That's a big question that's being asked nowadays. So it, it is worrying. And I, and I don't know what the future holds for Man United, honestly, <laughs> in terms you know, of success. Yeah, yeah you know, you know, just, just, just coming on to that, if, to, to me, it feels like that they... I think there's a number of... I'm just, you know, a, a fan. So I, I'm just analysing it from my point of view. I feel the two main problems are basically the tactical setup, like you've said. And secondly, a lot of players not caring. So uh, not going for 50-50s, 
you know, not tracking back. A lot, Garnacho got a lot of um, grief for missing the chance yesterday, but at least he bloody tracks back. And yeah. he doesn't leave his full back. Or, or Rashford was a oh. joke, man. The guy constantly, no wonder Shaw's always injured, and I'm not even a fan of Shaw. The guy's constantly dealing with two players. And Rashford's work ethic and other players' work ethic does, does not help the cause. When you when with the Premier League as well, what I find is compared to other leagues, teams that are towards the bottom like Luton can give you a good game. You know yeah. they're not there to just be pumped; they can still put it on you. And I feel unless you, your work ethic is there as one of the main fundamentals, it, it's very worrying. And uh, you know, let's see how that improves. Just co- sorry, did you want to add to that? No, no. I, I mean, yeah. The, the only thing I wanted to say is if Rashford's work ethic is like that. Then who's responsible for changing it? You know, yeah. Who's yeah, you know, <laughs> very valid question. Very valid question. You know, just coming on to that player's work ethic. You know, what are your thoughts around Bruno Fernandez and his 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 way of playing? Because what I see with him is, and I'm a slightly different player, but I'm going to compare. Like, if I look at maybe Odegaard or I look at De Bruyne, just a slightly different profile player, but. To me, they seem to control the game a lot better. And I feel what I find with Bruno Fernandes is every ball he has, he feels like, one, he has to create a chance, or two, it has to be a Hollywood ball. It's very rarely like just constantly one, two, one, two, pass a move, pass a move, let's just slow it down, dictate the tempo. It's just constantly like, even we were discussing before, in the 90th minute when we were in the corner, yeah, he should have just kept the ball. And he's gone and had a shot, which has then led to an attack which they hit the post from. What are your thoughts around Bruno Fernandes? So, if we go back to uh, 2020 when he signed, or yeah, 2020, in sporting, there was a stat which showed he's lost the most balls in that league. Right? So he's lost, the, he, he had lost a lot of attacking, like a, a lot of attacking passes or through balls through trying too many risks. And for me, it's. It, the way he plays works in a system which allows him to be like the best player in the team. Like he's the heartbeat of the team. But at Man United, it's not like that because you have other players and Man United are not just a one-man... Like we, we, It's a team effort at Man United. There's not like one standout player for me to say, oh, we need to give him the ball as much as, as, much as possible. For me, there hasn't been a standout player this season. So I just think, once again, the coach... How strong is he to tell Bruno, just play simple from now on? In certain phases, he gives it away. And for me, that, once again, when you're playing in a midfield three, not four, but just three in the middle, you're a big contributor to keeping control over the game. Correct, if, you have yeah. one, if you have one person just giving the ball away, trying to play that Hollywood pass, that leaves two players. And that's why, mathematically, two players in the middle, it's not, it's not yeah, really possible. You- you know, you and me can see that Rashford's not f- feeling it or he's not up for it. And he'll be in his, where Dallo is, and he'll play a cross yeah. ball. And you think, bro, he's not having it. I don't know what you're doing. He's just not having it. Why you keep giving him the ball? And then you think you're the captain. You should have a good understanding of the players, what, what mindsets, dictation of the game. You're in a crucial position. The team's built around you, more or less, you know, to make you flourish. But... He just constantly plays Hollywood balls, constantly plays them. And then he thinks, we're just getting turned over and he's still not understanding what's going on here. And, and this is why it's a real shame that Donny van der Beek had to leave and, and everything that had happened. But, you know, I actually think if we look at the Ajax, Donny van der Beek playing in that number 10 role, he knew what to do with Ten Hag. He knew when to keep it, when to make things happen. And if this position is not filled by someone who knows, <clears throat> as you said, decision-making, when to do what, to do of course Casemiro Menu will be left exposed because let's say Menu has worked hard Scott the ball giving it giving it to Bruno Bruno just gives it away and it's like oh here we go again you know yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> you know we, we were discussing off air um, players like Xavi Iniesta they just constantly kept the ball constantly and it, on the eye when you watched it you thought that's well easy what they're doing but exactly. in reality, it's not that easy you know and to me, sometimes Bruno thinks in his head, he must think he's like Zidane or someone like he's just going to constantly carve teams open. And and 
the other thing is he doesn't understand the players with him are not up to maybe that level or somebody's getting gas. You know, I saw uh, Garnacho and Hoyland, they practically ran themselves in the ground yesterday and he's constantly just giving them such difficult balls to chase. But the stats guys will then say, well, he, he loses the ball that many times because he's trying to create that many chances. How What would you say to that then? I would say that there's always a time and place for chance creation. Why doesn't De Bruyne lose a lot of balls then? But he has the most assists or whatever. Um, Foden as well. Like, for me, it's all it's all about decision making. So yes, Bruno might have like the most output or the most chances created and, and something, but at, to what extent do we value that compared to the team's control and dominance over the game? So if Bruno is up on the stats chart, and then someone will say to me, oh, look, but he's still creating the most chances for Man United. I'll say, you know what? I'll have less chances created and more control. I'd, I'd take that all day long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just... Uh, would you would, would you feel Mount would be a better option in that position? Yes, I would I would definitely try Mount, but benching Bruno... It, the, the, yeah, plus your uh, captain. Yeah, that's the captain. So... Once again, there's a bit of politics involved now. It's like, okay, it's Bruno. Can I bench him? Can I not? Just for me, yeah, try Mount there. Maybe just try going in this way. Casemiro, Mainu, and Mount instead of like this. Just try that. Then that way you have balance on both sides. Mount doesn't have to do this. He just focuses on this side. I think if Ten Hag just focuses on basic positional principles in the middle, just focusing on how to keep the ball, I think... They have the squad for it to an extent, but it's just but very frustrating. For that, don't you? Yeah, but you're the coach. You should be able to bring the discipline. But, but, but... the players are not having it as well. I don't know what he's supposed to do. I think, yeah. You know, I think... I, I'm, I'm with you. I think he's 100%. Uh, I don't think he, he... He holds a lot of responsibility as the coach, 100%. But I think the players don't help as well. And I think that's that's one issue. You know, it, it, I, you, you're a coach. You know better than me. You can have a player and say, like... Keep it short. Don't do anything for the first 15, 20 minutes. And the player goes out and the first thing he does, he plays a long ball straight over. And you think, what are you doing? And I think sometimes emotional players kind of get carried away with it as well. And I think... And Bruno, um, Bruno is one of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it feeds through the team. And I, and I start to feel sorry for players like Casemiro, who, 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 who then kind of gets turned over and he's dealing and he's looking at the pace of the game and he's like, what the heck's going on here? And then you've got guys at the back like Maguire who are not the fastest who are then panicking and then yeah. you know and they'll get called out and I feel Bruno gets away with murder but he doesn't help anybody's uh, as the captain you've seen top captains like Keane was a top captain Vincent Company was a top captain in modern Vidic was a good captain Gerard was a good captain in a really bad team they had a way of uh, understanding the situation and adapting to the situation and, uh, and then knowing what we need to do in the game and knowing because a manager in the game, you've got to have your own IQ as well, right? Thinking, shit, you know, this guy's a lot bigger yeah. than what I thought, or he's getting turned up. We need to just control it a bit. And I feel we just don't have that. And it should stem from the captain, in my opinion, anyway. 100%. And, and that's where some players, like if you look at Lionel Messi as a captain, he talks with his feet, not with his yeah, yeah, mouth yeah. And, and with his shouting and saying, oh, it's okay, try again. So... The way Messi talks with his feet, he keeps it simple, which is a whole signal to everyone. For the next 10 minutes, we are playing what we see. Bruno, just one mentality. And that's why when he's always getting the ball as that number 10 and giving the ball away most, like, let's say 60, 70% of the time, of course, as you said, Casemiro is exposed. Of course, Maguire has more to do with. Shaw might get injured more often because he's constantly running up and down. It's, it's, it all leaks it all like it's all like a trickle effect, like a domino effect. You know, a lot of the younger viewers might not know this, but 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 Arsenal's one of the top captains I ever saw in my time was Tony Adams, and even though he was an Arsenal player, phenomenal captain, just the way he would marshal the defense, give confidence. I remember listening to Gary Neville, and he was saying that in Euro '96, because of Tony Adams and Gary Neville was his, it was his first tournament, the way he just coached him through the game and just gave him the confidence and knowing what to do and when to do it helped him get so far. So, yeah, you know, a captain does play an important role. What are your thoughts on Rashford then? As in, like, attitude, implementation, does he think he's better than what he is? Yes, I, I genuinely do think that because if we look at the past, like, play, a player like Neymar 
is not known for tracking back because when he got the ball, he became he was Neymar back in 2015, 2016, made things happen constantly and everything. Rashford, if if Rashford can really produce output on that side of the pitch, then maybe we would be having a different conversation. But when he's not doing anything up there, like with concrete output consistently, which is a big thing, consistency, and he's not helping out Shaw, and he's sort of like walking around with a bit of a... Like I can see his body language is not the way a professional player at Man United should be. That's when I have a big problem. You know, it's like, look, do one thing, build yourself into the game. Like, you know. You know, from, from, from a coaching point of view, do you think teams have just figured him out and his game's not evolved? Exactly right. So if I'm the opposition, I'm thinking, okay, well, let's build on the right. If we, do, if we do three triangles around Rashford, he's going to be walking and then we can just get out of, of press, of, of the pressure. Let's not go to Garnacho's side, let's go to this side. And for me, that's not... At Man United, you can't have one player at 80%. Because then that's what ha this is what happens. <laughs> you you he's can't. Not even like Eighty. He's way below. He's, yeah. He's he's he's. You know what? Anthony gets a lot of critics. You know for his output, right? Which I understand. But Rashford gets away with murder from the press, from the media. Absolute murder. That uh, that attitude of his of of just walking around and thinking you're better than everyone else is really really poor. And then it comes down to the manager. Why are you playing this guy? He should not be playing. That that's where it's hard to say. Does Ten Hag um, is Ten Hag confident enough? But then we saw what he did with Ronaldo. So Ten Hag does have it in him, like just like with Sancho as well, to to say, look, you need to sort this out before you play under me again. And Anthony, whatever he does, he works hard though. <laughs> he works very hard off the ball. And at this stage, maybe we take that over someone like Rashford. But we're talking about Rashford last season being on fire, not this season. You know, I, I felt what Ten Hag did initially at the start of the season, I, I felt he tried playing him into form. Just yeah. kept playing him, hoping he'd play into form based on the previous season. But I've got a lot of friends that are Liverpool fans and they go, this guy is too hot and cold. And sometimes yeah. an outside view, and I thought, no, 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 he's good, he's good, he's good, right manager, he'll be good. But what I felt is, this season is, especially with his work rate, I don't mind a player giving a ball away here or there or, 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 or missing a chance like Garnacho yesterday. I've got no issue with that. At least, with, like I said, with Garnacho, he covers the ground and he thinks he's put a shift in and he thinks, you know what, fair play. You're not, every game, you're not going to score goals, so it's fine. But with Rashford, he, he, he constantly puts the team on. Him and Bruno are constantly just putting the team under pressure. But at least with Bruno, you think, OK, it's, it's, it's just the way he is. But with Rashford... His attitude, I feel, doesn't does does not help the cause. Do you do you think do you think they'll keep him after the summer? With PSG round as well. Yeah, that's a. Oh, okay. Let me rephrase that. Then, would you sell him? Yes, I would. Yeah, at at so this would stage, I... at this stage of where Man United are, it's not about the previous name and oh, he's a homegrown player. You you just got to think what's best for the club for our long-term ambitions. What's our plan? Our plan is to create this sort of a team. Rashford, countless opportunities to prove himself, even last season and, and the season before. Like We know the type of player Rashford is. At times, he's unbelievable. And then at times, he just really... It's like you're playing with 10 men. And for me, like where Man United are, it's, it's about the project, if there is a project, which is what the coach needs to establish first, and then finding the right place for that. So finding more players like Garnacho. Finding more players like Hoyland, like like Mainu, Casemiro, Lissandro Martinez, those sort of players with the mentality. Okay, I'm playing for Man United. Man, Man United. I'm playing for my manager as well. You know, you you, you mentioned the coach there. Um, do you think other teams have have figured out his style of play and sussed him out, and he doesn't have a, a plan B? Or do you think the injuries have had an impact and he's just had a lot of bad luck? I think he's had a lot of bad luck and injuries. But then, once again, I would say as a coach, as an elite level coach, supposedly, you know, at Man United and with your history at Ajax, getting to the semi-final Champions League, you should be able to adapt to the situation. OK, he's injured, he's injured, he's injured. Oh, no, I can't use that play style that I 
could do with them. Okay, I'm going to change it. I'm going to do this. But it's the same play style, different players coming in. Evans, 35, 36 year old, doing that pass and then running into midfield. It's like, what's going on? So I think Ten Hag, yeah, he, he should have adapted to the situation better. But I'm still an advocate of Ten Hag, but that could change very, very soon. Um, a combination of bad luck and his incompetence to quickly adapt to the situation. That's the you way know, I'm summarizing. You know where, where, where I'm a big supporter of Ten Hag, you know, and I really hope he does well. You know, um, you know where my kind of mindset is trying to shift it, and I started looking at things a bit differently, was when we played Tottenham at home. Okay. And they had a lot of injuries. They had probably more injuries than us. They had a makeshift midfield. Yeah. And, um, I, 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 and I saw Tottenham also play City where they played like fullbacks across the back four. They had no players. And I was like, wow, like this guy, uh, you know, uh, Ange Postacoglu. I was like, wow, you know, he's he's really like, are, are we being undercut here? Like, are, are, yeah. are we just, you know, I was like, how can he do that? And we can't. We've got more resource. We're supposed to have better players. The guy's been in the job longer. And this guy's gone to the Etihad. He's played four fullbacks across the back four. And he's, he's given a good game. He's come to Old Trafford with Skip in the middle. And Skip's playing like prime bloody Z Z Zidane, spraying the ball. About. How is that possible? Like, are we going wrong? And are we just believing in somebody that's maybe out of his depth? But that's where, exactly where the common denominator comes in all of this. It's the manager behind the scenes, you know? As you said, and, and the Etihad Tottenham drew that game 3-3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was phenomenal. Like, it was phenomenal play. Exactly. And I'm like, wow. And as you said, you're thinking, wait, at Man United, we have our full squad. Against Luton, apart from Lissandro, that's as good as a team United can field at the moment, give or take a few more players. So you're thinking, okay, come on then. Let's see what, what Ten Hag is about. Let's see what this team is about. And yet you're still seeing Bruno doing what he did. You're still seeing Luton have... Uh, creating so many chances, which yeah, you know, crazy. yeah, and, and Luton are like 18th or 17th in the league. And for me, the players that Man United have at the moment, now that they're all back from injury, it's like time is running out in terms of me still supporting Ten Hag because I want to see that style of play that Ten Hag used to say, "Oh wait, wait, I have injuries, I can't really do anything." Okay, now you don't have injuries. Can we can we see it? You know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, um, when when Tottenham played Chelsea, I don't know if you remember when they had two players sent off and they played the high line and everybody yeah. was kind of ripping them and they're playing. And I was like, I actually get what he's trying to do because the thing is with Aussies, right? They're very good mentality wise. They are beasts when it comes to sport. And I and, and I looked at Poster Cogley, he got a bit of criticism, and I was like, you know what? I respect that because he stayed true to his principle, right? He might have got a, a better team, might have pumped him 6, 7, 8 nil, right? Okay, I get it. But then he stuck to his way. He stuck to how he wanted to play. Honestly, when he went to City and he had them four, I, I had, he won huge respect from me. I went, you know what? Maximum respect for that. And then he went to Old Trafford. He had a, Honestly, that midfield was terrible on paper. It played us off the park. Yeah, and and then and then we could say maybe Ten Hag got lucky. I Minasa mean, got lucky to draw that game like two two. So, so e even yesterday, as you said, it's luck. Yeah, it's it a two one win. Pure it, luck, it, yeah. It, it's luck, and yes, United now have one draw and four wins in the last five games, which is strange in the Premier League. But as proper football fans and Man United fans, we're we're looking at the bigger picture. We're like, how sustainable is this? Yeah, it's <laughs> you know. Just based from a tactic point and a tactical point of view and a player player profile point of view, is there a manager out there that you feel could get more out of these the, this squad? Is there a better manager you feel that would kept the squad the same, but he could do a better job than Ten Hag? I think if you, if you just bring in a manager who's known for staying true to their principles. They'll get the, they'll they'll get more out of this team because Ten Hag doesn't have like I don't know what playstyle Man United are, but if you bring in let's say Hansi Flick, who who oh, doesn't have an exceptional manager Hansi Flick exactly, and exactly. if you bring him if you bring him in, you know okay I'm gonna get this style of play I'm gonna get a ruthless mentality, and this will this is what will happen Rashford will be on the bench with Hansi Flick okay Bruno might also be benched okay, and then you'll see the players excel because then the whole team. It's set up for them to play to their best. If you look at another coach, let's say 
even De Zerbi coming to like what he's done at Brighton with those players, he can do it at, at Man United as well. What about you know? Potter? Who? Graham Potter. Yes, him as well because at what he started off at Brighton, you know, he built the foundations. At Chelsea, things didn't go to plan, but a lot of things were happening behind the scenes. So, of course, Potter, he's known for a certain style of play. He's known for a distinct possession-based style of play with more emphasis on going fast and direct quickly, but still controlling the game. And wasn't wasn't sorry, wasn't Ten Hag known for that though? I hear the style of play. And and that's what's so confusing because he he was and he wasn't rotating the centre backs. He wasn't doing any of that. So I'm just thinking, like, what's his actual intention here? And then in the press conferences, Ten Hag mentions, yeah, we need to stop trying to score every time we get the ball. We need to keep it. So I'm like, okay, so so you're saying this to the public, but then we're not seeing it out on the pitch. <laughs> you think the players are just not listening then? The players, yeah, that, that, that's a good point. And then if the players aren't listening, then once again, this this badge, this this team, no team is is, is good enough for them, um, is right for them to to play in. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy, and me and you can see it. He's saying it as well. And then I was watching a clip of him, and he just had his hands in his head yesterday, and I was like, bloody hell! But <laughs> at some point, he needs he needs an understanding of like. But it's difficult, isn't it? Because at Ajax, you could drop Frankie de Jong, I'm just as an example, and the noise wouldn't be as much. Here you drop, Rashford goes on a bender for two days and the noise is crazy. So I feel it's the pressure of the job as well, which doesn't help him. And, and obviously he's the manager. He should be bold enough to make the decisions and stick by him. But we've been here before with Mourinho was as bold as you can get. You know, he didn't give a fuck about anyone. And he'd, he'd be like, right, you know, you're out. And you see how that ended. And it's just because, for me, how many players can we keep bloody signing? Every summer we're signing players. And then by the time we get to end of September, oh, the window was shit. But I'm like, not really. Because, you know, we can't sign. We, nobody has a perfect window. If you look at cities last season, they didn't have a perfect window, right? But we should, at what point are we... It, what I'm trying to say is... That, the answer can't just be signing players because we sign players all the time. You know, a lot of the players we thought that were bad influences have more or less gone. There's not many left. You know, Dean Henderson, Pogba, Lingard, the list can go on. But for me, it's just like, maybe it's just, how many times can we start over again? How many times can we start? It's just, I don't know what the answer is. And, and I feel a lot of people looking into this Maybe the new guys that are coming in will have a different approach to this and, 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 and a different outview. But I don't know. Because under Solskjaer, the, the, and to me, I felt he was a better manager th than what we have now. Under Solskjaer, the, 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 the perception was, oh, he's, mind, he's managing on vibes. He's not really a manager. He's a bit of potluck. And I thought, no, not really, because I thought he was pretty good. And then what we need is these players are good. We need a proper coach, somebody that can yeah. coach better players. Or either we get a proper coach in. And it's worse than Solskjaer. At least Solskjaer had some sort of idea, right? It was a bit counter-attacking. But it was the best we'd probably seen. And you know what? He did have an idea. He he did. Maybe it was a bit not the best idea, but he had a way of winning games. Look at his record. But to me, it's like now we have got a coach and the players have got worse. They, they don't seem to be getting any better. Unless uh, I'm uh, right or... No, no. Uh, yeah, I'm fully with you. That, and that's because there's no clear fundamental... St play style if, if if you're a player in a in, a, in an environment where the, you don't know exactly what the coach wants from you you'll get players like bruno and rashford <laughs> that's literally what it is like you you'll get bruno who will do what he wants at the wrong time you'll get rashford doing what he wants and then that's where there's a big problem so like absolutely i think without the clear strategy and clear fundamental way of wanting to play football every player seems lost Every player seems like, wait, what's my role? What am I doing? Am I going here? Am I going there? You know, just my last question to you then. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. If 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 I could say to you four players that you would sign that would improve this team. So they can be all four midfielders. You might want to have one defender, two midfielders, one attacker. But just from four players you feel that would really... Elevate this team and take it to the next level. Uh, 
I would go for Zubi Mendy from Real Sociedad. He's a very, very good centre midfielder. He plays as a number six, so I could see him and Menu really work. Because Casemiro, by next season, he'll be you know athletically finished. <laughs> I would, yeah, <laughs> Zubi Mendy is one very good option. Um, I would try and get a, an Italian centre back who's very good on the ball. So in uh, Bologna. Thiago Motta's coaching there's a player left footed centre back Cala Fiori who's okay. played left back who can play left back and centre back you can get them for cheap as well but those Italian homegrown like, young talents are so good to, to to get involved straight away they're quite um, physical as well they're quite physical the, the, yeah. and, and the Italian mindset I just love a tackle and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Premier League go on <laughs> do it yeah yeah absolutely so yeah it's a difficult one for me to find two more players. Obviously, what Rafael about... Liao, Liao is a good option, but he's, he's still got some consistency issues as well. What about as a as a, as a backup striker or another forward? Is there anyone you've seen? I forgot the guy at Porto. I forgot his name now. Um, he was going to move in the summer. He was. Uh, I, I looked at um, another channel that did a great on it. Is there another forward you see out there that could complement and step in? when Hoyland is maybe not firing or needs a rest, that you think, you know what, he might be good for United. A Cavani-esque maybe type, but not Cavani. Yeah. What about the guy at Bayern Munich? The the, the young lad, um, uh, 10, um, I forgot his name. He, he's, he, he, he's, he's been touted over the weekend as well. Oh, yeah. I think I know who you're um, talking about. But, but even... Um... Like one of the Wolves strikers, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can get one of them in. Like if you're Man United and, and you show a proper project, um, would you? Would you? Do, okay, let, let me. Th I threw this on to somebody in another podcast. Yeah, I was suggesting somebody like Danny Welbeck, who wouldn't mind sitting on the bench, but when he came on, he could add something and play games as well. Do you think somebody like that would really benefit the team? As long as they know their role, having having signed for the club, as long as they know that this is my role. I think, of course, like that would really help because right now you have sometimes McTominay doing a number nine role when he comes. He's in all the roles. <laughs> yeah, and and fair play to him. He's McTominay once again is another player that you know it will give more than a hundred percent when he plays. Yeah, 100%. yeah, you can't knock that. You know what people go on about his positional play. That look, the guy's doing the best he can, right? Exactly. He's got his limitations, but like Ten Hag said, his attitude and implementation you can't knock that. If Rashford had that, he'd bloody be a Ballon d'Or winner. Exactly, well, and, and and that's where, as you uh, as you just mentioned, bringing in a player like that, like a young player who, or slightly older, who knows what his role is, just allowing every player to know what they're meant to be doing, even when you sign the players. Because I'm not really an expert on who Man United just signed. Like I'd, I'm not familiar with all the names around the world. But in terms of the player profile, I'll, I'll know. Like okay, they need this sort of a player. They need that sort of a player. But the player needs to know what the project is and the overall play style of the team. And Ten Hag, for some reason, I'm still confused at why that's not solidified. <laughs> you know what? This conversation, we could go on for hours and hours, but I'm going to wrap it up there. It's been an absolute pleasure. How can people, you know what, get your insights? I know you've got some resources that they can download as well. I'll put everything in the description, but how can people follow you, check you out, check your workout? Yeah, so on Instagram, TikTok and YouTube, that's my username right there, the Honest Football Coach. And yeah, I post three, four times a day, everything related to football, tactical insights. If you're a football player and, you have, and you're looking at the mindset, confidence aspect, I'm a football player myself, I, you know, at a semi-professional level. So I've been through all of that aspects. So, you know, there were, vi there were random videos, basically, just all about football, tactics, in a, in a way that I would say is not been most common on online platforms Rafaz it's been an absolute pleasure you know what I'm sure we're going to do this again but yes. thank you so much yes, for your time yeah thank you Bilal for having me I really appreciate that thank you